what is the connection between our pictorial experience on the one hand and the pictures, the pictorial representations on the other? These are quite different things, even though they might in the end be connected. If you understand what our pictorial experience is, so if you have a good understanding of what it is to see something in a picture, it's not clear that you then also have a good understanding of what it is for a picture to represent something. These two things require connecting. And people that have tried to explain what pictorial representation is by offering some kind of analysis or theory of seeing in will inevitably also give you that connection. So when you read their theories, you could be looking for both. So what do they say about what seeing in is? What do they say about the distinctive experience of pictures? And what do they say about how that experience connects to pictorial representation? Now, this is the typical form it takes. And again, it uses a kind of story about how pictures are used in communicative practices. Imagine an artist, a painter, and they set out to paint a picture of a landscape. So they want to represent a bunch of trees in a field. They themselves are aware of pictorial experience because they've been looking at pictures and they can look at the picture that they themselves are making. So while they are drawing and while they are painting, they are able to see things in their own painting. So they are able to have that distinctive experience in front of the painting. They will make their painting such that they themselves are able to see the right things in that painting. So if the painting doesn't yet entirely work, they might tweak it a little bit, add some paint here, or maybe take some off there, so that it is possible to see, say, an oak tree instead of a tree of some other kind in this painting. That's what the artist does. And the artist does this also with an eye on future viewers. So when the painting ultimately is displayed in a gallery, the artist is sort of thinking ahead and is thinking of what viewers will be able to see in that painting. So the painting is an artifact that is designed to elicit these seeing in experience in a whole bunch of people. And that really is what it is to represent something. So for an artist to represent something is to produce an object that is intended to elicit these seeing in experiences in a viewer. And for that object to represent something is for it to make it appropriate for someone to see certain objects in its surface. So let's say that the painting represents an oak tree. It does so because it is appropriate for a viewer to see an oak tree in the painting. So here we have something very distinctive. We've got an analysis of meaning, pictorial meaning, in terms of an experience, seeing in, and some notion of appropriateness or correctness. So we say of a painting that it represents an oak tree if someone can correctly see an oak tree in the painting. And this is really what distinguishes pictorial representations from other objects. So it might be possible to use other objects for picture seeing. Imagine that you go into nature and you find a piece of tree bark that enables you to see something in it. But just because of the way it happens to be structured or, or, or textured, you're able to see a face in it. You could think what you're now doing is engaging with the tree bark as if it was a picture. You have the kind of experience that is distinctive of pictures. But nonetheless, the piece of tree bark isn't a picture because it wasn't intended to produce that kind of experience. It's not correct of you to see a face in that piece of tree bark because there is no standard of correctness attaching to that bark at all. It is just a random piece of bark. 
So on that conception, what we say is that pictures are a kind of artifact. They are produced with maybe a communicative intention to show people things by means of this distinctive seeing in experience. And as soon as it is correct for someone to see something in them, then they count as pictorial representations. So here we've got an interesting theory of pictorial meaning. So the meaning of pictures is now something that arises, according to these views, only because it becomes correct in a certain practice to see certain objects or scenes in certain surfaces. So the painting of the landscape has meaning only because in that practice it is correct for someone to see a landscape in the painting. So if you want to ask now what is distinctive of pictorial meaning, you will have to refer in your answer to the seeing in experience. You could think of this as something like a, a subjective or an experiential theory of meaning. You can contrast that with the earlier resemblance theory of pictorial meaning, which, in the way I laid it out, doesn't include any subjective or experiential elements at all. So the resemblance theory spelled out pictorial meaning merely in terms of a visual resemblance between a picture surface and some kind of object. Whereas this other theory that makes use of seeing in spells out pictorial meaning in terms of a distinctive kind of visual experience that can be had correctly in response to this picture. So here we've got two frameworks for understanding pictorial representation. Both of them offer an account of what pictorial representation is. The resemblance theory does it straightforwardly in terms of a visual resemblance. The more experiential theories take a detour and they first formulate an understanding of the distinctive visual experience of pictures and then they use that to give an account of what is distinctive of the meaning that we find in pictorial representation. 